this is Dr. Lewis, another example of a molecular orbital energy diagram of a conjugated system. And this one is one of the aromatic type, except this one, of course, is not aromatic, it's anti aromatic because it's got two, four pi electrons, so that's a 4n system. So that means it's anti aromatic. However, right, that's not the question here. It says, Draw molecular orbital energy diagram of the pi orbitals, which is just means it's just this bit in the middle. Doesn't matter what they're stuck on the outside. Include the number of electrons and label the HOMO or the LUMO. In this case, there is no LUMO. So I've just used the same wording from a previous question. So remember, to get the picture of where the energy level is going to be, we draw the shape of the thing the shape of the molecule, a triangle in this case, and we put it in a circle called the frost circle. And in the middle of the circle we draw a line. So basically the energy level which is at the vertex at the bottom is going to be bonding because it's below the line and above the line is going to be antibonding. And because there's four electrons that's because that's why it's anti going to be high energy system because we're going to put electrons into these orbitals here. So remember the key thing is whatever shape you get it could be drawn so it could be drawn like that. So if it was drawn like that you've got to remember to do it with the vertex at the bottom. For the frost circle. Right, so now we know the layout of the orbitals, so we can just draw a triangle here. That's going to be one orbital, and then above it there's going to be two other orbitals. So there's a line here which is below is bonding, above is antibonding. That's not important at the moment. So remember we start with no nodes, so our p orbitals are all the same phase. So it's bonding, so it's like a standing wave going round and round, very stable. And the one at the top is one node, so we have a simple one going through there, and then we can start with draw an orbital, there's an antibonding interaction there, so that's up, that's down, and because there's a node going through here, there's no p orbital electron density there. The other one is going to go across the faces like that. So this will have a bonding interaction at the top, but then an antibonding one below. And although they look different, the energy should be the same, and that's because if we count up the total of the bonding and in in antibonding interactions, it should to be, add up to be the same. So there's one antibonding, and there we've got one antibonding, two, sorry, one bonding, two antibonding, overall one antibonding. So they are the same energy, even though they look different. They have one node, one node, so it should be the same. So we can stick a line in to put our electrons in, and we've got four electrons, so we will put two in there and remember if we're filling up orbitals of the same energy and we've got two to put in them we have to put them in paired first so this is in fact the s homo or the somo so i should have changed the label there but it's singly occupied so it's only when we get that we get singly occupied molecular orbital if it was a cation, it would be exactly the same picture, but we'd just fill up the bonding orbitals. So that's why the, ca the cation is aromatic. The anion, essentially sort of diradical, is extremely unstable, anti-aromatic. And that's it.